by uh, Professor V R Shah. Uh, I will uh, briefly introduce the speaker first, and then we will take a message from our I S Rakti President uh, Alok Bhumik sir. So, Professor V R Shah is uh, has been a professor and head of structural engineering department at the SEFT University. Uh, for a long time and right now he is a mentor and professor at various institutes he introduced the concept of studio teaching at a post graduate level where he taught structural design uh, in a way it is uh, taught to the other designers and uh, today he will talk about structural engineers and uh, how they can contribute to the process of design by uh, bringing creative inputs and uh, innovation use of materials and systems he will use some case studies from history works of um, some master builders he will also discuss some experiments carried out by him in the teaching of structures um, and uh, one can see how a structural engineer based on his understanding of structural behavior form material and first hand experience of process of construction can contribute to innovation and creativity in structural design he is also uh, one of the structural consultants for the very prestigious nalanda university project about which he will uh, talk little bit later in his presentation uh, i request uh, sir alok bhumik to please give a short address as we begin our webinar again thanks very much dr anil shet for your welcome address and uh, nice introduction to professor v r shah uh it will be my pleasure and proud privilege uh to listen to professor shah i had never listened before and uh, that too i find the topic uh, that that he has chosen very interesting innovation and creativity in structural design this is this is a great topic a topic close to my heart friends uh structural engineering is a great profession we all know it's a profession where you know you can take pride in creating structures uh you uh, sort of uh, as a structural engineer you can uh, sort of create something you can design and you can see it built in front of you you contribute to civilization and to society by doing something which is visible you can show your grandchildren you know uh, that look this is the structure designed by me uh, maybe 40 years ago it is one of those few professions that combines uh, sound profound scientific theoretical knowledge with lot of creativity and this is one such profession also where i find that learning never ends you continue to learn till you retire from thinking not even retire from your active professional life well uh, i am not here really to uh, stand between you and professor shah for whom you are here i am here to express my gratitude to you know one and all for making the webinar program a grand success i wish to express my sincere thanks to the events committee of iis trakti and the secretariat for putting up these series of webinars uh, uh, one after the other i think this is the sixth in the series you know in last 3 months as on date we have uh, three more to come in this month and in the next month again two more webinars are being planned under the best of circumstances it would have been difficult and challenging task we know and how difficult it is to organize webinars but to do the same in this difficult circumstances is really something great and i sincerely thank dr anil shade and her team for this uh also my special thanks to professor shah for sparing his valuable time today with us sharing for sharing his knowledge i thank all the participants who are taking keen interest in these webinars and building their knowledge base uh today as i can see you know we have about uh, 182 participants and we are still counting so uh, i i think the tomorrow we have one more a uh, webinar with professor mahesh tandon and on 27th we have a panel discussions so i think we are we are keeping the structural engineers engaged before i hand over the stage to professor shah i would like to make an appeal to all those who are not yet members of our association structural engineers kindly consider 
taking our membership and getting all the benefits that the membership gives you in the long run. Uh, with these few words, let me hand over the floor to Professor Shah, and I am here uh, very much looking forward to his interesting and excellent lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So okay. Professor uh, Vyasha, over to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anil, first of all. And uh, thank you to the president also. Uh, I think, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. This, I, I had already given this talk uh, here in Gujarat chapter when Dr. Vakil was there. Uh, but this is a larger forum. And because of this, uh, you know, online, it is possible to reach more people. Uh, so, and I'm happy to know that so many people are interested in this topic uh, because I keep on talking about this subject with my friends because uh, as Anil have given the introduction that uh, uh, I, I, I was a professor uh, in uh, School of Architecture and also uh, uh, I was a head of the Department of Structural Design where we used to call it structural design. And as she said that we had introduced the uh, whole method of uh, studio teaching. I'll talk a little bit more into that detail, but let's start with uh, uh, the presentation first because it is quite a long presentation. So I'll have to you know, go through it very fast because I want to cover a lot of things because the, uh, the, what we are going to talk about is innovation and creativity. Generally, these things are not taught or not talked about in engineering. But you, we, we do engineering, we do structural design, we use it somewhere, or some people have used it, but we never see it or we never realize it. So I thought that it would be a good idea to cover as much as case studies, as many masters as possible, as many forms and material are possible so that people will have a, at a large idea about what this innovation and creativity in structural design mean. Okay, let's go. Go to the next. Anil. Yes, please. First, what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just pick in the form of pictures, I'll tell you that what I'm going to cover in this presentation. So, Anil, can you hear me? Can we go to the yeah, next? Yes, yes, we are going to hear. So, if you see these pictures, I'm sure uh, you may be uh, aware about uh, some of them. Uh, you may not have the idea of some of them, but largely if you see the first three that they are uh, the, when the iron was invented. The, you can see in the center, the Eiffel Tower on the other side is this full broke del, uh, bridge on this side, Machine de Palace. And these other side that you see in the first column is uh, that is uh, the uh, concrete navy structures. What you see in the center is a uh, okay. multi-storied building. On this side, you see a Robert Mylas bridge. On the, cor on the corner, what you see is uh, the structure by Mandir Raj. And on the upper side, you see a shell that is, uh, again, Felix Candela shell. So I'm going to start with steel. Then I'm going to talk about a little bit about concrete. Yeah, go to the next. Next. Uh, this is again uh, that is a little more uh, more materials that what you see the first one is a reinforced brick masonry. Then you see a Pompidou Center, very well known structure where the Peter Rice uh, structural engineer had played a larger role in the whole uh, structural design. On the other side is the recent one, um, brick brickothopia. So where the, the tiles are used in such a way that they are in full compression. What you see the second row is the mm, uh, Waterloo station where three hinge arch has been used. And the architect and engineer have collaborated in such a way that not only the structure, but the architectural aspect of the light, you know, taking light from two sides and how to how to accommodate these three trains in such a way that they get with this three inch. And there's a lot of more detail that I'll discuss when I come to that. 
the what you see on the next to this uh, waterloo station that is the second row the last picture is by uh, indian architect uh, professor chaya and himanshu parik who is uh, who was the structural engineer for this and then i thought that i should also cover some modern uh, modern structures where people have started using bamboo so you see the bamboo structure and of course uh, that uh, sydney opera house next Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, this. Uh, of course, that is a geometry. The first one is Buck Minister Fuller. Then what you see uh, the below that is the Nalanda University, as Anil said in the introduction, uh, which is the project that uh, we are right now working on, and it is almost over from our side. Uh, the construction is almost 60% of that is over. Uh, the next is. Uh, the studio for a uh, the my colleague who was with us in sapt uh, and the after that what you see on the top is the structure by my office where we have used the rammed earth and the structure below that you see is using the bamboo and the last line that you see is that i want to talk about something that the experiments that we have done in teaching uh, then we also offer some workshops so the, the next is that and the last one is about csb csb uh, used by satprem in in a large dome of 21 meters okay next yeah so we start with this pool uh, uh, coal brookdale bridge now if you look at this bridge you know uh, as a structural engineer there's who are into the bridge design you are going to have the uh, presentation tomorrow uh, recent advances if you look at this you may find what is this 100 feet span is nothing and there's so much of steel used into this but this was the first world's first iron bridge and if you look at it you will find that they have almost used like a stone arch you know they have made the small you almost like a small pieces of stone is similar to that and that's what happens actually when you go from one material to the other material at that time they had no idea that steel is so strong in tension so how to use that in the tension and uh, and you will find that in the structure people started using in they they realized the potential very very late but here you can see that not only that but in those days this structure old brook dale although for us it is a very small structure very so many artists appreciated the whole thing and even they have drawn the painting based on this you know this is a really a interesting structure uh, that way and go to the next yeah uh, this is a, at the time of when uh, eiffel tower was erected this was one uh, steel arch which was 115 meter you know in span 45 meter high and length was 420 meter it was more for the exposition it was a expo and now look at yeah look at this you know you may i don't know whether you can see it clearly or not if you see that the the lower leg is 12 feet and the pin is 20 feet Uh, sorry 20 inch diameter 4 feet long you know this was go go to the previous slide it was when wrought iron was invented go to the previous one yeah Anna, yeah, yeah it takes yeah yeah it was 1889 you know yeah go to the next now next along with this you know if you see the at that time because people were used to see the very thick brick and stone structures you know the verendil you know verendil girder so verendil who the verendil girder who verendil invented this verendil girder he said that this lack of proportions produces a bad effect the girder is not balanced it has no base it starts too low the eye is not reassured the supports of the gallery d machine show another fault they are too empty because they were not used to see these kind of structures they were massive structures 
and when steel entered into this picture they started becoming lighter so this was a comment by him go to the next yeah uh, so this is a very known structure all of you uh, those who might have visited you know paris they must have seen this structure but important part of this structure is that if you you may not realize but the whole form has come only from structure the this was not by any architect it architect was involved later on it was just the structural engineer and it was based on the cantilever with a bending moment cantilever with a uniformly distributed load go to the next next yes yeah see the bending moment diagram and the er uh, the first uh, that proposal you know by fil nothing you know it was just two and then connected tied this was the structure but then the later on the arch in the lower part was introduced so it was purely structure at that time go to the next and and if you read this you will realize that at that time the architect engineer and artist were not happy about this what did they say they said that persian artist petition against the monstrous structure although now a worldwide symbol of romance the radical design of the eiffel tower inspired anything but love in the heart of 300 prominent uh, persian artist and intellectual who signed the following manifesto that ran in the lee temp newspaper on valentines day in 1887 what did they say the writer painters sculptors architects passionate lover of the beauty until now in that top paris hereby protest with all our might with all our indignation in the name of french taste gone unrecognized in the name of french art and history under threat against the construction in the very heart of our capital of the useless and monstrous eiffel tower the screed even say that gigantic black factory chimney was so low that even commercial minded america does not want it so <laughs> this is this is what happens actually at that time that material you know people were not ready to accept the kind of structure which has become the most yeah okay. most famous structure of this time uh yeah so that was about the steel at that time and of course there a lot of development in the steel i may not go into i'll start with that and now this was one uh, that uh, uh, gaudi uh, you might have heard you might have not heard the uh, some some of you might have not heard the name of this is antonio gaudi was one who was making all his structures in such a way that they will be in compression he used to suspend the change and get the form and then design the structure in such a way that the the construction material will be only one which is good in compression okay next yeah this is the method that he used to use suspend the material find the form and put the material uh, in compression next yeah now i'm going to talk little bit about uh, uh, concrete uh, the these four masters you know he, uh, some of you might have heard the name of these masters uh, were working more or less at the same time uh, robert mellar pierre luginerui toroha and felix candela but surprisingly if you see all four of them had you know used the material like concrete in a very different way not only that but they had and so good understanding of the material because at that time the method of analysis was only elastic method of analysis and material at that time was the material the analysis of section of a concrete was only elastic there was no plastic matter or there is no elast the ultimate method of analysis or limit state method of analysis so at that time these people had a because they were working with working with this material and on, in those days 
when you work this, with this material, you will have to give the test of that material. So that is why at that time they had a feel for the material. So and they work in a different area. Let's see one by one. Yeah. Anand. Yes. Yeah. This is actually uh, Robert Mylar. Robert Mylar in 1901, when there was not much of a knowledge about the uh, concrete, even for that matter, not much of a knowledge about the uh, the analysis of such bridges. You know, he, he designed this bridge and the story is that the authorities said that it is so flimsy that we cannot have, uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot have this in urban areas. So uh, he went to the rural areas and if you see that how, how well it fits into this landscape and he designed this. The story goes further that when this was designed, the, the wave that you see had some cracks. It, it cracked. And because of that cracking, you know, he, the authorities thought that it is unsafe. So they, he called, they called Robert Mylar and Mylar saw that and he said that don't worry, it, it's structurally safe, it's just the shrinkage and shrinkage cracks because of drying of concrete and thin, uh, because of thin wave but nothing wrong with the structural stability. But authorities were not ready to believe this. So they, 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 they said that they, they didn't allow him to work for uh, three years. You know, then he came back and then he did some innovation into this. Go to the next. Yeah, uh, can you see this? This is Tanvasa bridge. So he removed the wave. He said that wave is not required in this case. I'll, I'll remove that. He removed that and he said that in, in Hindi we say that na rahega bas, na bajagi bas hui. He removed it. Okay, so that is how they were working with the material, understanding of the material, behavior of the material and based on that they were going right. Yes, next. Yeah, then he went further into this. Then he connected with this. Then he went on, on and on and he, 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 he made beautiful bridges. I'm not going into the detail of all that because this is not about Robert Mylar. We have many more uh, people to cover. So we'll go to the next. Yeah, he, he was also into this. He was also into other kinds of structure where you see that you may realize, you may think that what is so, it is very simple structure, but no, when you see the bending moment diagram, you will realize that this is based purely on structural actions. Go to the next. Yeah, this is the bending moment diagram. And using the bending moment diagram, he made the whole structure. Next. Yeah. And then he was given this assignment, uh, Portland Cement Research Group. Uh, they, they say that what can you do using the concrete? So as a part of that uh, exhibition or as an exhibit, he, he made this. It was 21.4 meter long, 27.1 meter wide and 15.25 meter high overall with only 60 millimeter thickness. Yeah, next. Yeah, then, then comes uh, P.L. Nervi. Pierre Lugi Nervi. Now, Nervi was a structural engineer by, by his qualification and he was practicing also as a structural engineer, but he was working for a contracting firm and he was working in such a way that structural should be most economical. So he was using all the structural actions or in all construction procedures you know, in such a way that the whole structure will become most economical. And in the process, he created the structures which were aesthetically beautiful. They were appreciated more for the aesthetics rather than structure. Of course, structure gave the aesthetics to that. And at that time, he, he said that Nervi never thought himself as an architect by education and by choice, he was an engineer. However, he saw no separation between the two professions. They have a common area of responsibility. They both strive for the same results. The structure with strength, utility, grace, and constructed in sincere collaboration from concept to final realization. 
Next. Yeah, this was the, the, his stadium and the beautiful part of this was the spiral stair. Next. Yeah. And see that he had some idea about the concrete at that time. And what was that? That I may not read this, but he realized that the reinforced concrete as a, a, as a it has the major property of molding. It has the property of molding and also it can be monolithic. So at that time he saw that people were not fully utilizing the potential of that material. Go to the next. Yeah. Then he start, he, he worked on this uh, there and he, he created a ferrocement molds. So because the major part of the Concrete is the enabling or the shuttering. If you cannot do that properly, you know your cost will go high. So he used this ferrocement, ferrocement as a as a shuttering. Next. Some more details of that. Next. Yeah, next. Yeah. This is uh, the detail of that. Next. Yeah, this was one structure where actually he used this uh, isostatic lines. Isostatic, all of you know, is where the stress is same. In this case, being a beam, the bending will be same. So he used that and he created a beautiful structure. Not aesthetically good only, but also oh, quite, uh, you know, cost effective. Next. Uh, and he, he said, Neri says, it made possible to design ropes, ribs located along the isostatic lines of the principal bending moments, a design which makes possible strict adherence to the laws of static and therefore makes the most efficient use of materials. The example of this is Goti Wool factory, ceiling in Rome of 1953. Not only structural efficiency, he was aware of the sensuous implication of this engineering. The aesthetically satisfying result of interplay of ribs placed in this way a clear reminder of mysterious affinity to be found between physical law and our own senses. Yeah. This was one where I think he, he was uh, not working for the contractor, he was working for an architect. So uh, he was working as a structural designer. But interesting aspect of this is, go to the next. Yeah, then he followed this bending moment diagram completely. In, 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 in uh, making the form, you know, it was a folded plate. But in folded plate, what he did was, he changed the flange from top to bottom in such a way that the section is subjected to compression and the flange is available there. So, very good use of understanding of indeterminate structures. Yeah, next. Yeah, next. Yeah, this uh, was 61 meter diameter dome, uh, Plaza de los Port. And actually the most striking thing about this was, if you realize what he did was, he had cut the dome at a point beyond which it will be subjected to tension. If you know 51.8 degrees is the uh, angle beyond which it will be subjected to tension. So what he did was at that he provided the column which can take bending and he provided Y-shaped column so the load can transfer in that direction and vertical load can transfer because those Y column, Y-shaped columns were supported. And to take care of the thrust, entire ring was provided which was pre-stress concrete. And it came out to be an excellent, you know, oh, dome with a 60. Not only that, but because of that Y-shaped column, which is stuck, which was done structurally, but that gave a whole possibility of light from there. And it, it, if, if you have a complete dome structure, the aesthetics will be completely different compared to when it is Y-shaped support like this. Next. Uh, 
அதனால் நெக்ஸ்ட் this is actually one structure which i like most is actually it is a 40 meter by 40 meter square and you can understand the cantilever will be almost 18 19 meter because the column and the column itself is central pillar itself is 25 meter and tapered in height okay. so these actually my students studied this and we it is not visible here but otherwise those who know structural design they know even the shear connectors you know shear stiffeners you know, they were also designed in such a way that the minimum material goes into this so he made the use of concrete and steel in such a way that again that comes out to be cheaper uh, the most cost effective uh, now it is 40 by 40 there are four of them in either side hmm. hello yeah i got the message uh, uh, it is not audible is it uh, anil i'm audible let me check you are audible to me let me check okay it's audible uh, but uh, uh, somebody may have a problem from their side because others are replying that it's audible okay okay so yeah, yeah it is very much audible yeah yeah this is problem with the individuals gadget yeah yes. okay let let's go let's go yeah, yeah. uh just to be one second yeah okay 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 everybody yeah. is i i see so lot of messages okay okay mm, okay i think uh if people stop uh, putting this message i can start because on the screen i see so many messages <laughs> uh, you can minimize that okay uh i can i minimize yes uh, of course you can minimize I, i think very good i think this was a small pause and this is very interesting thing about this is what nervi has said and actually i i i forgot to tell you in the beginning that i learned a lot from these four masters about what they say what they practice and the kind of uh the 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 feel for the material that there what nervi says here is i think i don't like text i don't write i don't like writing so much onto the ppt but these are very important part of the engineering so i have written it as as ditto what nervi said the most advanced chapters of theory of structures that deal with the solution of statically indeterminate system can only be used only to check the stability of structure to analyze numerically a structure already designed so design comes first not only in its general outline but in all its dimensional relations the formative stage of design during which its main characteristics are defined and its qualities and faults are determined once oh my god uh once for all just as the characteristic of organism are clearly defined in the embryo cannot make use of structural theory and must resort to intuitive and schematic simplifications the reliance on intuition in this day of almost religious reliance on mathematical formulas cannot be overstressed although this intuition must be based not on aesthetic mistake but on general mystery of our new most vast and difficult architectonic language in all of its functional vocabulary structural technical and static i think this is very very important i think we'll sum up all the four what they want to say but i think he is saying that the more reliance on the intuitive understanding of the structure n n d analysis should be used as a tool of the design i think this is very important part that is what we are talking about okay let's go to the next yeah one minute yeah uh, some some more structures 
some more structures. I'll, I'll not be able to go into more detail of this. Those who are interested, I have, I have written three articles on Pierre Luginari, Felix Candela, and Robert Myla in SCD magazine. So they can have access to that. Yeah, let's go to the next. Okay, finally, I think, uh, uh, finally in his words, I would like to call the attention of architect, engineer, critic, and those others who have an interest in the beauty of architecture to an often overlooked objective fact that architecture is not an idealization of form or culture. To think so is to deny the objective fact. Materials, building technology, economic efficiency function, this is the vocabulary of architecture discourse. It is impossible to elevate the discourse to the level of poetry, that is architecture, or correct prose, good construction, without a perfect understanding of that vocabulary and of a role of grammar and syntax, that is technology of which it is to be composed. Yeah, I, I like this very much. Yeah. Now, we're going to a, another master builder, uh, uh, Toroha. Toroha also, this is 1935. Look at this. This we, we saw uh, the Robert Mylar who was working into bridges. Other one, the uh, Nervi was uh, uh, working into all kinds of structure. Here, Toroha is working more into shells. And, and uh, in a very innovative way, this, what you see, is actually hyperbolic paraboloid shell. And uh, the cantilever is almost 12 meters. Go to the next. Yeah. Uh, the, it is written here, uh, 42 feet long, overhang uh, hyperbolic radius of curvature is 9 feet and thickness is only 2 inch. And beautiful part is how, look at this, how delicately it is, uh, you know, supported on the other side. So you don't need too long on this side because the lower, uh, lower shell will help in balancing. The other thing is that the architectural beauty of this is that you see CD. CD is a mammar which is in tension. And this is about the expression of the material. This is in tension. You don't need so much of thickness. So it's a very thin, you know, rod or maybe pipe in such a way that you can express the stress which is there in that mammar. Okay, next. Yeah, this is uh, again uh, the uh, Toroha in 1935. He, 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 he wanted light inside. And as you know, the shells are difficult to cut, you know, even today also. So what he said, what he did was he cut the whole thing, but then he provided the ribs, which you can see in the next slide. Yes. Yeah, Anil, next. Yeah, see, then he provided the ribs. Okay, next. Yeah, this is actually, if you look at it, it, how beautifully, you know, this Y-shaped column, it, in a way, if you look at it, what is this? It is an aqueduct. It is an aqueduct to carry the water, right? Now, in that case, how beautifully this Y-shaped column, not only that, but structurally, it was made so efficient, will, 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 We'll see in the next slide. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one. First. First thing is parabolic channel cross section pristress concrete. The top is there is a tightening uh, screw. So there is a turn buckle provided with a tension member. Go to the next. Yeah. And this is a balance cantilever. This is having a joint after that land, it is a balanced cantilever. So what is the beauty of that is entire section, the lower part is not in tension because this is going to have the water. So to avoid the problem of leakage, the, the only that top part will come under the tension, bottom will not come under the tension. So beautifully done in those days, understanding the structure, material, and even for a simple structure like this, you know, beautifully shaped. Yeah, next. Okay, so that was Toroha. Toroha has done a lot of other works. 
uh, that is a beautiful parabolic uh, water tank and other structures, but I'll not be able to cover many of them. Uh, here, that what you see is, uh, uh, again, uh, the fourth one, that Felix Candela. Felix Candela was uh, actually an architect, but he said that I'm, an, I'm not good at art, so I will practice as a structural engineer. And if you know hyperbolic paraboloid, then he whole of his life, he worked on only hyperbolic paraboloid. He, he, he worked on hypa, you know, and this is one of his beautiful structure that is in Mexico, which was constructed in 1958, you know, Milco Restora, Mexico. And you can see that it is 32 meter support to support. And this the beautiful thing about this is that even, even for that matter, he was, he was, he was having even in many of his structure, he was having the hyperbolic paraboloid foundation. So that's the, he, he was using this hyper. And why, why was he so much interested in hyper? Was the fact that, fact that these structures, when you say hyperbolic paraboloid, if you're aware about that, it can be generated using the straight line. That means it can be generated using the straight line. That means the shuttering for this is easier. You can use wooden planks and you can generate the shape. And that's why he was trying to, he was trying to get the, the, the he was trying to save on the cost. Similar to Nervi, Nervi was doing it differently. Here he was doing it, he was using the shell. So when you use the shell, the thickness will be much lesser, but the problem will be shuttering. So he solved the shuttering problem by choosing the shell, which is a high part. Next. Yeah, some detail of that. Next. Yeah. And what he was doing is he, he was, he was dividing the spaces with a small, small shaped high pass. So he was not making big high pass shells, he was making small, small ones in such a way that there'll be no problem of age distribution. There'll be no problem of stress concentration on the ages, Do you know, but beautifully, quite integrate, you know, kind of a structure he used to make using iPad. Next. Uh, okay. Now, I think this is, the, apart from these two figures that you see, what is important is this text. When I began building shells, my mind was just developing from student to scholar stage. As a student, we believe everything that we are told, that we have, for instance, what they call exact methods of analysis for structures. Now I begin to lose faith in all things I had believed before, but this is necessary point of departure if you are going to do anything of your own. Yeah, uh, some people are asking some questions now, uh, I would say that mm, we'll take up the this. Uh, you in can the take the question. questions uh, after Answer. the presentation is over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Now, this is uh, why this uh, Anal F5 full screen. Ah, okay. Now, this again, again, uh, similar to Nervi and Robert Myler, what Felix Candela has to say. Felix Candela said that. The logical process is always an afterthought. He, he, Nervi also said the same thing, no? Conceptual, uh, the calculations are later part. When solving a problem, you must ignore what you consider irrelevant so that you are left with essential. When you can see the essential, everything becomes simple. The strength of the design is not in the concept, but in the ability of the designer to emphasize the structure and thereby to project the building as a monument, Felix Candela. And what you see with Felix Candela is uh, Santiago Calatrava. We'll see that he has also done beautiful work. Actually, if you look at it, 
this uh, Felix Candela uh, was, was inspired by the um, Toroha and then Santigio Calatrava got inspiration from that, which is actually, if you see in engineering, we, we don't have that kind of a thing. We, we don't have, you know, role models. Or if you, if you ask any structural engineer or any graduate, you know, tell what are the great engineers, you know, in, in India or all over the world, you know, they will have no idea. It is the, our study is so objective that without even knowing that who, who, what the great engineers have done, you know, we can design the structure. You know, we can analyze the structure. We don't need anybody. We don't need to understand all this. But in, in, in case of a uh, architecture, it is always subjective and they will look forward to what other people have done. You know, that is a very strong, if you, if you even ask first year student, he can tell you some 20 great architects of the world. Now, we, even if you ask some of our engineers who is Mahindra Raj, they may not know. It is, it is, it is because ours is objective. Why should we know that who has done what we can design on our own? That's the theory. Yeah, go to the next. But at that time, looking to these four engineers who were, who were doing great work, the great architect Lee Cabusier, you know, who has written a book on towards new architecture in 1920. What did he say about that? He said that our engineers are healthy and vital, active and useful, balanced and happy in their work. Our architects are disillusioned and unemployed, boastful or peevish. This is because there'll be nothing for them to do. Our engineers produce architecture for, they employ a mathematical calculation which derives from natural law. And their works give us the feeling of harmony. Today, it is the engineer who knows best way to construct, to heat, to ventilate, to light. Is it not true? That is what Lee Cabizier has said in his book. And there is a, there is a person uh, uh, oh my God! Mm. Uh, who has said that there exists a class of persons whom we can no longer refuse to call artists. The artists I'm referring to who have created a new architecture and they are engineers. Okay, next. Yeah, now we'll talk about some architects uh, who also have you know, taken enough interest in uh, structure and created some beautiful structures. This is uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, and this is uh, that he he created this uh, mm, the pointed uh, mushroom shaped column, and at that time, you know, he he felt he he was asked that. Uh, this he will have to taste this structure because authority was not convinced about this whole system. And these columns are hollow columns and the, the, the plate that you see is also a hollow, uh, uh, hollow. And this thing was tested, one unit was cast and it was tested. And during the casting, it took almost six times the load. So this was the strength of that column. Next. Uh, this is uh, but Minister Fuller. Yeah, next. Yeah, uh, then but Minister Fuller were also actually into geodesics, and in the geodesic, then he he went into the detail of geodesic, and he created even the dimension house. Next. Yeah, even he was uh, so fascinated by that. So he went into the detail and he had a dimension car. Okay, next. Yeah, this is quite an interesting. Uh, now, uh, Eladio Diesta, in 1952, Eladio Diesta worked on very interesting material, reinforced brick masonry. A very interesting part of this was that it was almost a frame. And what you see here curved is that it is part of the column 
and from that column you know have you have the go to the next yeah inside also you can see the 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 ceiling is also the curved cylindrical and the columns are so the whole thing was like a frame and you can understand this that in case of a masonry structure also he could produce it in such a way that it can take tension and compression yeah next yeah there were some people who like mees vandero who worked in steel you know and uh, this is one example where he created beautiful structures in steel and quite long span structures yeah next yeah next yeah this is again uh, this uh, about form making uh okay this is uh, uh this is uh, uh, hence is lay who created a shell you know and they were funicular structures and he he used to suspend the cloth and from suspended cloth he will get the uh the shape and th these were not like hyper they were very long span structures go to the next next this is the method that suspending it and then getting the shape from that yeah next next yeah uh that uh, some structures uh, the modern part of this is that i'm sure all of you know sydney opera house and this was quite an interesting uh, in the sense that from the beginning you know this structure uh, it, it is a, it is a good example of where the architect and engineer how they need to collaborate and with that collaboration actually how this actually structure whole thing started with the uh, initially from the jury itself you know this uh, the ujjon was an architect and his entry was not selected his entry was on the contrary rejected and when the the jury members asked for this rejected uh, and in that case this was the one which was finally selected and then ujjon saw this as a some kind of a natural shell but that you know o arup n n n in that case peter rice was also there they 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 saw that it cannot be done as a this because this was quite tall so this was done as a grid you know and and even in terms of the kind of money that they had to spend and the kind of analysis that they had to done the kind of construction problem they had to face they were tremendous even at one point of time ujjon was thrown away from the project but o arup was into this and this whole thing was completed but now you see like you know that afil afil also this one is also a landmark you know structure go to the next yeah and i'm sure all of you know about fazlur ar khan who actually contributed in a great way in 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 for the multi story building because when you do a multi story building the major part start becoming lateral forces so how do you take care of that yeah thank you uh, uh this is actually yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, go to, go to the previous one yeah uh, yeah this is uh, you know sort of a diagree you know because this becoming a vertical cantilever and with that vertical cantilever how, how do you take care of that so uh, hazdur ar khan was working on that so this was one solution the next one is next next one is uh, the uh, uh, this is bundle bundle tube you know those who are into multi story building they know all this technique but those who are new to this you know the, there are various ways of taking care of this in uh, the lateral load the this was actually the 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 story of this that you see in uh, the book by uh, uh, fazlur ar khan's daughter that what what is said is that this whole thing came up when architect and engineers they were sitting in the restaurant and uh, the architect and the fazlur ar khan both were 
uh, you know, smokers. So they were smoking and then architect with a that pack of cigarette, he took out some cigarette with a different length and he was just holding with the hand. And he said, can we not have multi-stored building like this? That different, it is bended at different points and they will give the strength. And first of all, Khan, you know, was working onto this. So you have the tubes at different places and uh, these are tied at places. The base, base part of this is that uh, you can stop the tube wherever you want. In case of other structures, you know, changing the, you know, the plan becomes a little difficult. Yeah, next. Yeah, this was uh, uh, competition-based project, uh, Pompidou Center, uh, where Renzo Piano and uh, Richard Roses were there. And Peter Rice was an engineer. And this was the structure which uh, this Renzo Piano is the Italian architect. And this structure was in France. So when they this was awarded, I think the story, interesting story of this is that unless, oh, uh, I don't know, I get this message, not audible, is it? An individual's problem. Anil? Yes, sir, I'm checking. Uh, okay, so it is uh, audible to some, uh, somebody. Yeah, it's audible to most. Thanks. Uh, I think it's an individual problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for confirming. A, yeah, thank you for confirming and a small pause. Uh, this actually, this whole thing was uh, as a competition, they got this award. But the story is that, uh, go to the next one. one minute. Uh, this, yeah, you see this, uh, the whole thing was about this uh, cantilever. Actually, the whole thing is that this whole structure uh, is done in such a way that inside truss, you know, is, is supported by this cantilever. So cantilever helps in reducing the moment inside. But this gerberate was done by casting. And the whole project was, you know, in, in, in trouble because of this gerberate. Because the first time when they invited the tender, it, it came out to be very high, almost double. So Peter Rice and company, you know, they said that, okay, we'll have to do something. Then they consulted the, uh, why I'm telling these stories, I'll tell you later. Then they, they consulted uh, some, some manu uh, steel manufacturer who are interested into this. And then after that whole thing was done, you know, the cost came down and it was reasonably balanced. And they said that, okay, now we are free, so we can start. So this tender was done and everything was done and the casting started and Peter Rice thought that now I'm free, I can go. But what happened was when they started casting this gerberate and the first gerberate actually failed to meet the requirement. So they, they, they were again in trouble. So they went to the Germany in some university, they got this thing tested and they found the procedure that is followed in France and which is followed in Italy in manufacturing this kind of a material was different. So then they rectified it, they got the required stand and this whole thing that you see almost like a Eiffel Tower, an important structure, a tourist place, you know, was possible. So why I'm telling all these stories is if you see the Peter Rice, he has written a book on engineers imagine. It is, it is that if you, if you see that everybody will get an innovative idea and you would, can, can, get a, uh, can have a creative thinking. But to, you know, to materialize that, you need to go to this extent. You know, because you will find all kinds of problems. Even they had a problem of language because they were from Italy. This was a France. But with all these problems, they wanted to make sure that this is done. And that's the story. That's the story you will find everywhere. You know, that if you get a good idea, innovative idea, you know, you need to be after that. Unless you, you are, you are not, not, not there, 
it will not happen because there are many many things which will be against this what you are thinking and you saw even eiffel tower also people will not in favor of eiffel tower so okay let's go to the next yeah this is one more story of uh, this uh, uh, fry auto fry auto you invented this whole thing about tensile structure you know tensile he saw that the materials that we have they are good in tension they are very flexible but they can't take any compression so what do you do you you make your structures in such a way that the members which are in compression are very short members in tension are very long and he he generated this kind of form using the soap bubble you know which soap bubble means it is entirely under tension you know so with that he used to do and he used to do uh, a meticulous work with this kind of thing that he will find the form generate the form and he faced a lot of problems in this also but you know he he, he gave a completely different structural system which is known as tensile structures yeah next yeah now coming to little modern structure where this is a waterloo station now waterloo station that if you see it is a three inch arch and this was some almost 40 plus meter span but they had provided three inch and why three inches were provided is if you look at the bending moment diagram you will find that the the compression goes from top to bottom in on this side you have a compression on the top on the right hand side you have a compression at the uh, top and here on this side it is bottom but the length is less and this whole triangulated thing was done in such a way that you get more headroom on the left hand side and then you can put two car to two two metros here and one metro there so uh, rather it, it it must be trained uh, so this whole thing was a mock up was prepared some two or three of them they were you know constructed on the site and they tested it and then i i forgot to tell you at many places even including felix candela they had to give the test of their structure no this this in those days you know the analysis part was not so good even this was also done this was very very late i think in 80s but this was done this testing was done to make sure that the constructability because in many of our projects in nalanda also we asked them to make the mock up we'll discuss that later yeah next yeah uh, this is another project kansai airport i think uh, uh many of you may know and if you don't know it is on a reclaimed soil it is on a island you know so jokingly sometimes i say that it created a problem and they are now trying to solve it because this whole thing is sinking and they have provided the columns in such a way that they monitor the sinking and then they can adjust the length of the column but otherwise it's a beautiful structure go to the next again the same renzo piano and the overup uh, see that uh, i'll i'll discuss little more in detail but we ask our students to study this kind of structures and what you see on the uh, upper part uh, on the right hand side is a model you know the done by the student so they understand that the how the form will work how how the joinery will work i haven't i am i haven't put more information about it but they completely study all this because this is essential part of the study at least in architecture it should also be in structural engineering or civil engineering but here they do that a very interesting structure next yeah this is uh, again uh, by louis khan Uh, the famous uh, uh, gallery uh, that is kimbel art gallery uh, it is in uh, texas uh, i had opportunity to visit this the beautiful part of this is that uh, unfortunately i i i i 
did put that image is the shells are not the last one. The inter one, internal shells are cut in the center. So they are not in a way shells. They are curved beams spanning at two ends. But the beauty of that is you get the light from there. And the, the whole thing is that describing is fine. But the best thing is if you go inside and see, the light is so good, so uniform into this that you, 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 you almost don't need any, any artificial light, even for the uh, exhibition. And this, even, even for that matter, uh, Louis Kahn, uh, who, Louis Kahn who, is, uh, who is an architect, who he used to say that the structure is a giver of light. So he used to use this. Next. And now from India, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have too many examples of uh, uh, Indian architects and engineers. Uh, there is nowhere I'm saying that they have not done great work. I'm sure great work has been done in India in this time. But unfortunately, you don't find any published books or published material. Or maybe if it is there, uh, it is my problem that I didn't find it. Uh, Mahendra Raj structures I know because I I have I had this uh, uh, fortune to meet him personally. We had invited him in our course. Also, that he he he, he has written a book also. So all this material is available. Now this what you see is uh, all of nation, Pragati Medan. Now, this is actually, you may not see it here, and I can't see you all those details, but this is a space frame. The surface that you see is a space frame. You know, because this, the one is that form gives a strength. So it has a form, but more importantly, it is, it is made of the space frame. In those days, even the Buck Minister Fuller was here, and he, 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 it, it is written in Mahendra Raj's book that he, he was wondering, why are you making space frame in concrete? And then he said, in that time, the steel was quite you know, costly in India. So it was done in concrete. Yeah. Go to the next. Yeah. A similar structure. Similar structure has been done by him in uh, uh, Srinagar. But... The good part of this was that he didn't use the same system here. He didn't use the space frame. And of course, the span was small, but he used a this plate in bending. And the oh. members that you see, you know, he used pre-stressing. So the whole plate is now in bending rather than like a space frame, which is in tension and compression. So same form. Same thing. As the span changes, he changes the system. And also, the story that he is then in his book is that this structure, when the uh, architect, I think it was Kanwinde, Kanwinde, when approached him, he was ready to give the columns in the central part. But Mandara said that without those columns, you know, uh, he can mm, give you, uh, he, he can give him this kind of a structure. So he removed those columns, he, he, he said, and he gave alternative, and the whole architectural design also changed. So I think somebody has asked me in the email about architect engineer collaboration. Now, these are very good examples. One of my students, he studied the architect engineer collaboration, where he studied the, uh, he took the case study of Mahendra Raj uh, Doshi. Uh, Mr. Doshi and Raj, Raj Rewal, and what was the kind of you know collaboration that was happening for the design of structures? These are these are great examples. Okay, go to the next. Yeah, uh, the some more examples. Uh, this here the Varendil has been used. You know, if you see the interesting plan, there are some shear walls and just the Varendil two floors coming together. The, 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 the picture that you see on the other side was done by my student uh, as a you know, computer image. Next. Uh, yeah, again, uh, Fazlur Khan, 
uh, this is uh, uh, using the tensile structure similar to what Nervi had created, 40 meter by 40 meter span, but in a in a very light structure. Uh, and uh, and uh, the 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 best part of this was this was module of 40 by 40 meters, and in such a way that even if you want to extend it, you can do it. If if the one part fails, you know the entire structure will not fail because that is very important in case of a this kind of module. Next. Again, uh, Santiago Calatrava, I, I said that uh, we saw that uh, uh, earlier in the picture. Uh, he, he actually, he, the interesting part is he was actually, he was artist, architect, and he did his uh, uh, PhD in structures. Structure in the sense, uh, topic of structures, where he took some collapsible structure or something like this as a PhD. And you see his structures, the beautiful structures that he has created. I'm showing uh, one structure only, a bridge. And you can see that. If you see this, it is on, on the left-hand side, you may see supported, but there's a very light support. The whole thing is balanced on the right-hand side. On left side, there is hardly any support. And it is cable stayed uh, kind of a bridge. Uh, and you can see the beauty of this structure. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Uh, this is another bridge by him. Yeah. Next. This is uh, by Cecil Balmon, and the architect is Alvaro Siza. Uh, this is uh, span is 70 meters, and thickness is only 200 millimeters. This is because architect wanted to see it very thin. It's almost like a cloth. So, he, 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 Cecil Balmond uh, is uh, a structural engineer. Uh, he was the director of O Arup uh, and Company, uh, and he he has done some beautiful uh, structures. Uh, he has written a book also called Informal, and uh, this is one of that uh, structure. Uh, the, if you if you see the next slide, you will realize what he did. Next, yeah, it was actually cables. You know, it, with that cables, the whole thing, 200 mm thick was supported, and 200 mm means you know 0.2 into 2.5, almost 500 kg per meter square of upper load. So that was good enough for the wind and also good enough for the uh, earthquake. Also, with that, he could minimize the uh, cracking width 2.2 millimeters. Okay, okay. Yeah. This this is uh, uh, this structure because it is online. I can't, you know, get. I I can't ask you to guess what is it, you know. But if you can put the message, can you can you guess what what is the material? Glass, RC and steel, paper, wood, fiber, bamboo, various. Yeah, yeah. Glass Thank paper. you. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, this is not possible. Otherwise, my, generally, I like, uh, you know, this uh, interactive uh, classes or interactive presentation. This is actually uh, paper, paper tubes. These are paper tubes. And this is these, uh, these uh, Shigeru Ban. Shigeru Ban works in this material. You know, and uh, there was a person from Bureau Hepol who had come to SAP 
and he presented that this complete all tubes are tested for tension, compression, the the elastic modulus, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and the, it is it is completely done in a most scientific and in, in an engineering way. You know, you may not even I think probably if I'm not wrong, uh, he also is going to make one structure in India using the paper tubes. He was here in India in Gujarat at the time of earthquake. He made one the the temporary you know shelters using the tube uh, with uh, Karthik K. Sodan, who is the architect here. You know, so he uses this kind of material. Uh, and I think so far, if you have seen different materials, how people are using it differently, and what we are taught in our courses are. This uh, uh, what what we are taught is only uh, steel and concrete and maybe wood. Okay, let's go to the next. Yeah. We have a lot more to cover. Uh, Anil, what is the time and what is the time left? No, I have a lot. Uh, sir, you have covered uh, about one hour already. Maybe we can take uh, ten more minutes. Is that all right? I think it was one thirty. I was given. That is okay with question answers, we can manage. Okay, okay, so I'll go quickly. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, again a grid yeah, shell. Sorry, we have we have finished one and a half hour actually, it's 5.30. But we ah. can take 10 more minutes, yes. Okay, okay, I'll go fast. Uh, let's say, uh, this, go to the next. Go to the next, next. I'll go quickly, next. Now, this is one, uh, Again, I'm sure uh, all of you know this. That's why I have not written anything on this slide. Uh, this is Laurie Baker. This is Laurie Baker's work. And I think most innovative in terms of cost-effective solutions. You know, that's why I have not written anything under this. Next. Next. Yeah. This is again uh, CACB block dome, you know. Uh, I think it is almost 21 meters. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next. Yeah. This is uh, during construction. Next. Yeah. This is again coming back to this. Uh, uh, I think this new trend in uh, other universities is that university takes up, you know, making the new experiments in use of building material and structures, and then they go to the practice. So this is one where it is the uh, using the recent software of this, uh, the plugin Rhino. How do you get Rhino. the funicular shape? This, uh, Rhino, uh, Rhino, uh, this plugin, uh, that the, how do you get this uh, funicular shape? So they got this funicular shape and they constructed it. Go to the next. Yeah, uh, this is this is the structure which is purely under compression. Uh, they have used only tiles. Next. Mm, yeah, this is the formwork. Yes. Next. Yeah, uh, this is this is the example of a similar structure in India. Maya Somiya School Library. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, this is actually uh, this is uh, the uh, the earlier one you saw on this uh, uh, boards here what you see is uh, the temporary uh, this uh, steel rods are used which can be used uh, later on for the uh, other construction work so this is just absolutely temporary in nature next and this was also funicular shape Similarly developed, yeah, next. Yeah, this is again here in Ahmedabad in Bhuj, uh, Professor Chaya uh, is the structural engineer and Iman Chuparik uh, was the, uh, Iman Chuparik was the structural engineer. And this is the material is rammed earth and top part is CACB blocks. Yeah, and, the, and then on top of that, it is steel. Next. Yeah, 
and this is some uh, thing that is happening in this area is bamboo uh, this is flamingo resort next yeah inside what is happening next bamboo yeah yeah these are some more structures next yeah these actually uh, go, go to the previous one these actually i i i like this uh, because this material actually if you look at it this earth that is rammed earth or csb or uh, for that matter bamboo is almost like what the four masters did a lot of people are working in this area this is uh, uh, this is by one of my colleague uh, sankal who is doing the work in which he is trying to test it actually this is a it's a uh, real simpler way of doing it but in a more sophisticated way also people have started because bamboo is such a material so because for structural engineer it will be very difficult to rely on you know uh, any calculations because the strength of the bamboo is different in the bottom different at the top you know the sizes are different you know where they are grown is different size is different so there's so much so many variables that you would have to have engineered bamboo and you should have confidence full confidence and joinery is another issue which needs to be dealt with but this i think lot of work is happening actually i see this is the area emerging area in which the engineer should because i see the initiative by the initiative is taken by the architects engineers are just helping them because there is no mechanical properties known there is a high variation into the properties that's why they they, they do not have the confidence yeah go to the next some of the uh, structures done by me uh, because uh, uh, you read so much you talk so much but unless you construct you know uh, or you design yourself you will not realize the kind of problem that uh, that uh, you will be facing so this is one that we did in delhi uh, which was 23 meter by 23 meter each panel was 23 by 23 uh, and which was done using the hollow uh, sections yeah next next yeah and the best part was that we had done all joinery all details but but the contractor who was on board he said i don't need any joinery i'll 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 make the each panel on the ground and i'll just erect it so our major problem was solved next yeah this was the glass was almost 3 plus meters next and i think most probably those who are from delhi uh, it is a monkey bar i don't know whether it if it has changed yeah this is another architect who was working in a different material it was stone nimish patel uh, panika if you know uh, they have done beautiful this was a seven star resort but he wanted to use uh, uh, stone and from the beginning he said that mm, all uh, this what we are going to do is we are going to use all and this traditional technique i will not allow you to do anything modern if you have to do it you will have to prove that it is essential go to the next next yeah next next some some innovation in the column next uh, this uh, go to the next next uh, this is one where we had it is it, it is in kunur where we had used uh, bamboo flit sections next yeah uh, this was again flit sections next yeah uh, this is a uh, uh, park shah uh, the bps architect in rajkot where we had used this uh, flit sections next and then how it is expressed as a hinge joint in the bottom next yeah uh, this is uh this is uh, smruti one uh, which is the project that uh, we are still doing uh, it is with uh, uh bibi doshi's office sangat was social pa consultant uh here the it was for a earthquake victim memorial so there they had planned 
uh, the 18,000 people had died, so they wanted some 18,000 trees to be grown. But for that, you need uh, some water. So they had planned the check dams. And check them, we had used Gabion. Gabion is the material. Yeah, next. Yeah, these are the, yeah, the during construction, the Gabion steps. Next. Yeah. Uh, next. Yeah. Uh, at night, after completion. Next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next. Next. Yeah. Uh, it was done in such a way that central part there was a small tank, which will which was RCC. So that much of water will retain. The rest was because of Gabion, it will it will percolate and it 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 will keep the surrounding soil you know wet. Next, yeah, uh, this is a sun point there on the top part of the hill. This is one structure. Yeah, next, yeah. This is one that I think somebody had asked me. Uh, uh, this is uh, the Nalanda University. And this we were involved from the competition uh, stage itself, uh, and this was what is proposed. Yeah, yeah. Next. Yeah. This is uh, the after that they won the competition. We started working on it and the thing changed, and this is the final plan. Next. And these, the, the important aspect in this was that we are using uh, compressed earth blocks. The blocks made uh, from the soil from the site itself. And not only that, but because this is a large project, what we have done is we have manufactured this CACB on the site. They are manufacturing almost 10,000 units per day. Next. Uh, some more structures. Yes, next. Next. Yeah. These are uh, apartments which are going to be purely CACB load bearing structures. Yeah. What happened? Sorry. Yeah, this is one more uh, project that we have done for the architect here who, who was my colleague, uh, Pratyu Shankar, uh, who is now Dean uh, in uh, Baroda School. Next. Next. Now, he came out with this, that he wanted something like this. We say that we can give you much better than this. And the next is, yeah. Yeah, this is we gave him a portal frame, you know, where you can see the connection and the support. Next. Yeah, and this is whole frame supported at two points. Yeah, next. Yeah, these are the connections that you can see, the detail at uh, two ends. Next. Yeah. This is much better. I think I'm not very much happy about the other detail, but this, this came out very well. Yeah, next. Yeah. These were some structures done by uh, my office here in nearby. Uh, this is, uh, again, a very low cost uh, you know, structure where these country tiles are used. Next. Next, again, to save the material. Yeah, this is uh, uh, again a seven star resort in near Nagpur, where we are using rammed earth construction and the top is uh, with uh, country, uh, country tiles, rather uh, fuses of country tiles. Next, now this is rammed earth. Actually, uh, luckily here, we had a beautiful soil, actually red color that you can see, uh, the color has come out very well. Next. Yeah, next, next, yeah, uh, I think uh, this is 
the last thing uh, this is about teaching that uh, in in i i used to teach at school of architecture and where students as an architect students are never interested in making calculations of design of reinforced concrete structures i have done in the initial uh, uh, initial career maybe that people who uh, passed in 80s and 90s i used to do uh, i used to get them do all these calculations uh, but then this was the batch they said that no we don't want to do any calculations i said fine what do you want to do they said we'll make a model fine you so i said that it is a reinforced concrete uh, design uh, course so what is the kind of model that you would make they will tell we'll tell you next time i knew that next time they will come they will not come with any any, any uh, you know concrete suggestion so i was ready i said let's let's make a concrete boat you know and then say they they were lost how to make a concrete boat uh, then even i was also i was thinking in the night that i said that but it will be so heavy how will it float the next time when we went there they had to do all those buoyancy calculations and everything and then they did they they came out with four suggestion one is ferro cement the next is lightweight concrete the third one is uh, uh, it, not ferro cement but with uh, with uh, cane concrete on either side you know and the uh, fourth one was uh, concrete cloth you know and the condition was uh, it four person should be able to sit into this and it should float if it floats you pass if you if, if it doesn't float you fail there is no other way of grading it so and all the boats were ready now how to test it so then uh, they went to municipal corporation municipal corporation agreed for testing in the kakaria lake but after two days the municipal corporation came with the tag say that no we can't allow you because if it floats fine if it doesn't how can i bring the you know crane and get your boats out so they they didn't allow so what to do i said no and the, the, you will have to uh, organize this because the important part is that it should float so then there was one student who had his uh, her own farm so we we went there and this is there they how they lifted it and they they had to put it into the truck go to the next one next yeah this is that uh, concrete cloth that i was talking about next yeah and yes this is that uh, it is it is floating next yeah this is uh, four person should be able to sit so uh, i'm there uh, the one who is waving is mangesh uh, who 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 was actually assisting me uh, into this course and two students so all the you can see at the lower part there are uh, ferro cement lightweight concrete and the only boat that didn't survive was uh, that concrete cloth but the problem was not with the cloth the problem was that while loading this in the truck you know that got teared off and that's why it failed but otherwise it worked very well yeah i think next uh this is something more about the workshop i may not cover next yeah next many people were asking that how long it is going to go <laughs> so this is yeah <laughs> that i'm sure uh, this is the it yeah uh, thank you thank you yeah uh, i think thank you can... very much thank you very much uh, professor shah it was an excellent presentation very fascinating and i was always wondering you know that um, uh, young engineers who are in the college they should be always taught conceptual design which we don't we don't normally uh, yes. teach and yeah. i think your presentation has given me a lot of hope Mm. if this is what you are teaching the students mm. and i think this is precisely the kind of conceptual design uh, teachings that is required in the college to the uh, young uh, civil engineers who are coming out mm. 
yeah. mean they should feel pride in you know civil engineering structures and you have demonstrated by you know these kind of structures that what concept design is all about yeah thank you uh, uh, over to you dr anil shade i'm sorry to intervene no in sir it was wonderful uh, professor shah and uh, yes uh, alok sir i agree with you uh, maybe we can take a few questions uh, i can see lot of uh, phrases for the presentation but uh, uh, maybe we can take a few questions uh, there is one standard uh, question recurring about uh, some uh, books and literature to recommend the uh, basics of structural design uh yeah if i have to answer that basics of structural design you will find you know number of books you know there are textbooks but for the kind of uh, the thing that i presented or the kind of things that i'm talking about there are all different sets of uh, books you know you will not find you will generally find unfortunately or fortunately you will find these kind of books in the school of architecture only you know because even for great architects great engineers they talk about we see that any any engineering college will not talk about nervi or robert mylar you know or felix candela you know for that matter even they don't talk about any structural engineer like mehendra raj or fazlur ar khan and that's what i said that we believe that without knowing all of them without doing anything we can design the structure because we know that maximum bending moment is w square by 8 you know i we, we know we have the softwares we can analyze that and we are done with this why should we know what 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 mr mehendra raj did or what fazlur ar khan did you know that's the thing but i think the 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 time has come that we should you know uh, we should for all uh, our uh, uh, the engineering colleges we should you know have a course where we are talking about uh, something beyond just analysis and making them aware about this different look at this this i said in my presentation itself that this bamboo mud earth all these you know architects are working into that you know we we we, we, we know never take the initiative into this you know the csb block that we we developed here we had to do do lot of work actually we we of course consulted uh, dr jagdish from mangalore but then you need to do all this so where you know we, we we are not interested we are interested in only you know doing the software analysis and then you know make you know, analyzing and designing uh, what is the different schedule uh, i think uh, that is related to the webinar and we will attend uh, at our level uh, okay. i i am still waiting for a few more questions uh, somebody is asking for those papers those and papers yeah they can be found in the acd we will also upload the three papers on the website okay, okay. great 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 so there is one uh, question what kind of analysis systems you used for design of nalanda university buildings using compressed compressed brick and rammed earth or tiles as a major structural member okay that, that that's uh... That's what kind of analysis very, systems that's a very relevant question actually mm -hmm. uh, there are two aspects to this first of all cacb block means for for an engineer it is it is like any other block so that part is solved whether i'm using burn clay brick or cacb there is no change or there is no difference in the analysis if i can analyze brick structure i can analyze this structure also uh, the what is important is the what the properties of cscb block long term short term because we had to we had to do the testing of that rigorous testing for all the properties even we had done a testing in nirma university for under a, a sustained load if the temperature rises to 50 degree what will happen to the blocks 
But otherwise, as far as analysis and design is concerned, it is similar to burnt clay brick because the, 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 the laboratory will give you what is the compressive strength, what is the tensile strength, what is the elastic modulus, and you can design it. There's no, we have used ETAP for analysis of the walls, and also we have followed all the uh, earthquake codes for uh, the uh, masonry structures. Yes, we will be uh, having the recording of this session uh, for those who are asking uh, on the IS, uh, IS Rakti website. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, there is one question. Is there a problem of leakage in bamboo structures? Uh, yeah, uh, this uh, question of leakage, uh, you know, there are actually nowadays, uh, that is not any issue because the upper part or the sides, depending upon how to do it, they can be covered with other materials and they, you can take care of the water. That's not an issue at all. Um, there is one more question. How the vault or shells made of bricks by lorry will be effective in earthquake zone 5? Uh, yes. In a way, if you look at it, first of all, uh, what you're saying is in zone uh, 2, the, uh, most of the time that he worked into zone 2 or zone 3. So that is not a problem. But even vault of uh, some reasonable size, may not have much problem, you know, of the uh, earthquake. Uh, because uh, looking to the, 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 the thickness, and even nowadays, you know, one can do the analysis, dynamic analysis for even uh, vertical forces also, and check. Because uh, you saw this uh, in case of a uh, Eladio Diesta. He had done this... Uh, uh, this reinforced masonry. So some kind of bands or some kind of reinforcement can also be provided if there is too much of a vertical force into this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is one more question. Sir, you mentioned the reluctance of engineers to explore new materials during construction. How do you think this can be eradicated? I think, uh, first of all, uh, Awareness. If if you see, if you have seen today's presentation, yeah, even when I started teaching in architecture, even I started this whole course, I realized that yes, there are number of materials, there are number of people who are working into this, and then then for each of this material, you know that there should be some kind of a matter available where you can analyze it properly, design it properly all this, or those who are ready, you know, to experiment onto this, you know, that that's why I said bamboo, not many people are, uh, you know, ready to do it. But now these architects, they have started, they will taste a specimen, you know, even for us, this uh, CACB block and our, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, mm, the gopurams, the tall buildings, we had done a sh shock table taste, you know, uh, rather, I would use it shake table taste, not the shock table. So it was done here in Nirma. So it is. It depends upon you know the the ones like like as I said earlier also that in case of a Pompidou Center also they wanted to do something and they had to find a way out. So if once you decide and if you convince, I think it is not difficult to uh, convince other people. Uh, somebody said that he is working in the area of bamboo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Frankly speaking, I'm not the one who is working in the area of bamboo, but I have my friends who are working into this. I have my students who, who are doing the studies into this. We, we actually, in architecture, we teach them at least 10 materials. 10 materials and 10 materials, the history of the material, construction of that material, structural systems in that material, and the stresses it can take and the future of that material. So if you know all these, 
and whenever you get the chance whenever you get the opportunity you will be ready to work on the different materials okay. i think uh, sir we will take uh, only two more last questions uh, sure. but before i communicate the questions i uh, let me tell uh, so many messages uh, that we are getting uh, we will definitely want to interact more uh, among ourselves so we will try to see how we can make a more interactive group uh, or a platform with is rakti and uh, yes all the applica uh, all the uh, registrants of this webinar as well uh, would be part of it so very nice to uh, have so many messages and so much enthusiasm so sir the over to you for the two la last two questions uh, one is how much compressive and tensile strength of paper material how long span can be bear yeah uh, so actually they they as i said earlier uh, they they test this right now why why i know that uh, shigeru bani is going to work in the uh, with a paper tubes in india is because they had asked us uh, the it, it it is it is that uh, uh, doshi's office they got this query that can a tube of 60 cm be tested so they test the tubes they find the stress and then and then they use it so for all this material even csb also we had to do all the initial test so any material that as an engineer unless i know how much tension it can take how much compression it can take what is the elastic modulus what are the long term stresses what are the long term stresses what are the short term stresses it can take you know i cannot work with that material of course as we said earlier not the earlier part when you are developing a system which is more subjective you know that you can think of various system but at the end of the day you are going to make it stand it not only going to make it stand but stand for 50 years and during 50 years whatever the forces because of wind or earthquake or normal temperature everything we we, we need to take care of so when we are saying that using this material is you need to work rigorously on to this when you are using some new material for which the, the, the there is no no standard you know guidelines available yeah and uh, last one which type of foundations are used for shell structure same as the ordinary structures or any additional criteria no they 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 could be they could be any normal foundations you know the more more, more important is that how do you take care of the thrust you know you first take care of the thrust and rest is fine that if if the thrust is taken care of and it is just a direct load it could be small individual footing also if there are thrust like what what happened in case of nervis you know you he had to provide a very strong pre stress concrete uh, ring it depends upon what is the type of shell what is the kind of forces you know that it has to take and what is the configuration of the shell itself uh i think that uh, should be all uh, uh for today uh so there is uh, just you. one clarification uh, some people were asking for certification so <laughs> please note we are not uh, having a, uh, we are not providing any certification for attending our webinars it is purely for knowledge sharing among structural engineers and we get the best speakers who are experts in that area and generally it is very well attended and uh, well appreciated uh, but if there are students or faculty you may please write to the secretariat if you want to open a student chapter or uh, uh, be a member or something so maybe the, those kind of questions uh, may not arise in the next webinar also yes sir alok bhumi yeah just before uh, we conclude this uh, Uh, and close uh, i just wanted to mention that tomorrow we have one more uh, you know webinar where professor mahesh tandon is going to be the uh, faculty the speaker and i would request all the participants to please don't miss uh, tomorrow's lecture as well uh, it will be as interesting as today's thank you thank you everybody i i'm going to be uh, ending the session Thank you very much for attending. Right. Yeah, thank you.
Thank, thank you, you professor thank you anil excellent uh, moderation thank you yeah thank you